In the first reading today, St. John tells us that whoever is just is of God, but also, he says, whoever is just loves his brother. Now that word just, remember in Greek, is really better translated as righteous. So justice and righteousness are the same thing in this way. And so we want to be striving for righteousness because that's exactly what our Lord told us that we're supposed to be doing. But St. John goes a little further than just simply saying, all right, we have to love our brethren because then we can convince ourselves pretty easily that we do. So we look a little further and he says, talks about Cain and Abel, and then talks about the fact that if we love, we pass from death to life, but anyone who does not love abides in death. And then makes clear what he's talking about. He says, everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. It's pretty strong language. But when we look at the fifth commandment, thou shalt not kill, we find that hatred falls under that commandment. So does anger. And so ask yourself, is there anybody that I hate? Anybody that I really want to see bad things happen to them? Anyone whose name, when I hear it, I just cringe because I can't stand them? Anyone I want to get even with? Anyone that I hope gets retaliated against? If we can answer yes to any of those things, we haven't forgiven. We're still harboring either anger or hatred or both underneath for that individual. And if that's the case, St. John is telling us that love does not dwell within us in its fullness, and therefore eternal life does not dwell in us in its fullness. So we want to make sure that we are set for eternal life when we die, and yet at the same time we keep justifying ourselves in our hatred, in our anger, in our unforgiveness, in whatever other things that we're hanging on to. There is no justification. And yes, I know, there is righteous anger, and I'm righteous in my anger. Uh Uh-huh. The desert fathers say, yes, indeed, there is such a thing as righteous anger, and it is so difficult for us that it is better to never get angry about anything. So how righteous is your anger? Remember, if there is righteous anger, that is there to motivate you to correct an injustice. However, the correction must be done in charity. In other words, the anger now has to stop once it's motivated you, and the action must be done in charity. And if we can't correct the injustice, then we need to let it go. So is your anger about something that happened last week or last year or 40 years ago righteous? No. If something happened a few seconds ago and it was unjust and you witnessed it, Yeah, there is reason for righteous anger. Somebody did something to this poor person and I have to go and try and stop it or I have to go and correct it. But something that happened a while back, no, we're not justified in our anger. It is not righteous anger. It may be anger about an injustice that took place, but it's no longer righteous on our part. So what we need to be about is the forgiveness. And that forgiveness is not always easy. But remember, when we pray the Pater Noster, 
we're praying a condemnation on ourselves if we don't forgive because we pray that we will be forgiven only to the degree that we are willing to forgive others. Now you might say, well, I forgive almost everybody except that one person who's such a jerk. Yeah, God will look at it and say, yep, I forgive almost everybody, <laughs> not you, because you don't want to be forgiven. If we want to be forgiven, we have to be willing to forgive. If we want to be treated with mercy, Jesus told us, we have to be merciful. If we want to be treated with charity, we have to be charitable. Jesus did not ask easy things of us. As I keep telling you, he's asking us to be saints. These are the things of saints. And you might look at it and say, well, I'm not a saint, so it's okay for me. No, it's not. Because he still is asking you to be a saint. And other than our Blessed Lady, no one started as a saint. They had to become one. The same is going to be true of you and me. Maybe we're not even a saint right now but hopefully we're working in that direction. So we look at the areas where we need to continue to grow. And one of the areas for most people is gonna be this whole area of the forgiveness, the anger, the hanging on to things from the past, the lack of charity that is there because of something that happened. Now, to be charitable and to love your neighbor does not mean you have to be their best friend. It doesn't mean if somebody punched you in the face to say, well, okay, I have to forgive him, and now I have to go and let him do it again. No, you don't. Don't be stupid. That's not what's being asked. But it means drawing the line, putting the whole thing behind you, letting go, by itself, that's very difficult. But that, again, is what we're being asked to do. Because we are also told in the gospel, the one we need to be concerned about is the one who can, can, who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Not a happy thought. So we live in this world where people seem to think everybody goes to heaven as long as I'm a nice person, well, then I'm going straight to heaven anyway. And I like to remind people, Father Zulsdorf, when he was looking at the word nice, said, I think it comes from the Latin word natio, which means I don't know. So nice doesn't mean a wonderful person. Nice means, I don't know. Is he a good person? I don't know. Is he a bad person? I don't know. So nice isn't going to cut it even for Minnesota. Minnesota nice is not going to get you to heaven. Charity is what's going to get us to heaven. And charity has to be across the board. It's easy to love the people who love us. Jesus said even pagans and tax collectors do that. So he's asking us to be saints. So he said, love your enemy. Pray for your persecutors. If we're going to love them, it means we can't be harboring anger. It means we can't be harboring hatred. It means we can't be harboring unforgiveness. So the way to handle that is to pray for these people. Pray for them by name. And if there's so much anger and hatred that you can't even pray for them by name, then at least go to prayer and say, Lord, you know the person I'm talking about here. Pray, bless that person. Help me to forgive that person. Help me to let go. And I can guarantee you, you can do that every day for a couple of weeks, and within a couple of weeks, you're actually going to be able to use their name in a positive way. And so, so it's going to just start praying for them. And with time, you'll actually be able to forgive. With time, you'll be able to let go. No matter what it is that they've done, no matter how horrendous it is, remember you're not being asked to say that it was okay. 
They did something horrible. That's not okay. But we have to forgive them. Remember, God will never say that our sins were okay, but he forgives. That's what he's asking from us. So don't fall into the devil's trap, coming up with all kinds of excuses for why you don't have to forgive, nor the lie that that means I'm saying it was okay for them to do it. Find the middle ground, because that's where the virtue is, and become the saint that God has asked you to be, loving God and loving neighbor. That love for neighbor is going to be found in a very particular way in the forgiveness, in letting go of the anger, in seeking only what is truly good for that soul.